Located at the top of Wisconsin, Bayfield County is considered by many of the locals to be the wild side of the dairy state. This is a place of majestic beauty with national treasures that include the Apostle Islands, the natural wonders of its sea caves, and rugged sandstone cliffs that frame the clear waters of Lake Superior. This is Bayfield County Wild. Welcome everyone, I'm Nancy Christopher along with my co-host Mary Motif, Director of Bayfield County Tourism. Hi Mary. Hello there Nancy. You know today we're going to get some ideas and tips for doing some holiday shopping in Bayfield County and we're going to visit Sue Vojak from Ulu Glass Gallery. But before we do that Mary, I have some holiday shopping trivia. Okay. Did you know buyers are 13% less likely to make impulse buys on a planned shopping trip? I did not know that. Well, I think it's all the more reason to plan a trip to Bayfield County to do some serious holiday shopping. That's right. What shops do you recommend, Mary? Sure. Well, there's lots of great shops all around the county. And we'll start up at the top of the county in the Bayfield area. You may not realize that some of the orchards are open all year long, including Bayfield Apple Company. And so that's a great place where you can stop in and get some of their value-added products like jams and jellies and mustards. Um, They do an apple mustard, and then they do some cider and hard cider. So those are great gift items for the holidays. Everybody loves, you know, local food items like that. And then when you get downtown, there's all sorts of shops downtown from the Apostle Islands Booksellers, Bayfield Wine and Spirits, The Brownstone Center and Sweet Sailing have just really great, not only gift items, but then while you're while you're shopping for others, you can shop for yourself too. So that's really fun. Um, they have great. And we always do that, don't and... we? I I always find something when I'm shopping for everybody else. So. Well, you know, when you happen upon something that you like, it's that's you right, know, a great time to pick it up. <laughs> um, Howell is downtown too. They have um, some great clothing items. They have really affordable, cute hats and accessories and things like that. Keeper of the Light is open all year long. They have. Not, so they're not only open during the lighthouse season, um, but they're open all year long and have great little gift items there. Joanne Scandinavian is a really popular shop in downtown Bayfield. And then the nice thing about Bayfield is there's lots of places where you can go and relax and grab a cup of coffee or go out for lunch while you're doing your shopping. And then not too far away in Washburn, there's a lot of great little shops in town there too. Schwamigan Books is there, Carlin's Gallery, Lake Superior Drifting Stone Jewelry. And then there's a couple places where you can stop in there too and get some treats um, for your stockings, like at the Harbor House Suites or at Coco Bakery right across the street from there. So lots of great things going on. So then heading west over to Iron River, the Northern Great Lakes Visitor Center is always a great stop along the way if you're looking to um, just check out the area. And then they do have that holiday bazaar going on at the beginning of the month. But in town in Iron River, lots of great little shops again. Um, Angie's Bakery is a really popular stop there, you know, just to make sure you have fuel for the rest of your journey. (laughs) Um, And and Jim's Meat Market, pick up some local, you know, meat sticks and um, all sorts of fun items that they've got there. Downtown, this old bunkhouse is one of my favorite little shops to go to. And it's just decorated to the hilt, you know, just really an amazing little shop. And then uh, downtown on their main drag, they've got a couple more shops down there. After you go to Iron River, then you have to head to the southern part of the county and you might have to go through Delta, which happens to be where the Delta Diner is, which is another great place to stop and grab lunch Absolutely. or yeah. a piece of pie or a milkshake or something wonderful that they make. Benoit Cheese is in the middle of the county there too. And that's a, a stop that's well worth it. Um, they carry some cheeses there that you can't get in many other places. So um, it's amazing what they have to offer just in this small little cheese shop. And they don't have just cheese. They have other things as well, chocolates and other treats. And then heading further south in the county, uh, down to the Cable area, you've got some great shops downtown, in- including Circle North, My Villa, Redberry Books, Um, There's now a bike shop downtown as well. All sorts of little gift shops, Whispering Pine Gifts and Gallery. Really, there are just so many choices. And each of these communities has such a great feel to it, you know, so you can really make a whole day or two of it uh, when you come to shop in the area here. And it's so much more enjoyable than going to a mall to do your holiday shopping. Who wants to do that? Well, it certainly is. You know, my pen can't keep up with all the things you have going on there. That sounds great. (laughs) 
So we should spend a couple of days up there and just experience everything. Yeah, I would really recommend it. You know, it's more fun than shopping online, too. Some of the things you know you're going to get online, but you want to do a little holiday shopping with, with that feel to it that just makes you feel good. What about events tied to holiday shopping? Are there any of those? There's a couple of things going on in Washburn at Stage North. And so if you time your shopping trip well, you can stop in and enjoy a play in the evening. So one of the performances they have is called The Best Christmas Pageant Ever. And then uh, that's put on by a local group called The Groundlings. They put on productions throughout the year at Stage North. And then later in the month, the Big Top Blue Canvas Orchestra puts on the Blue Canvas Christmas. And that's um, December 21st and 22nd, a little bit closer to Christmas. So um, whether you're there early in the month or later in the month, you can enjoy a performance at Stage North among everything else you're doing. Mary, how festive are the towns during the holidays? Well, everybody likes to dress up the downtown and there's, you know, big Christmas trees all lit up for the holidays and bows and lights and all that fun stuff. Uh, each each community really embraces the holidays and, and tries to make it a, a place everybody wants to be. One thing I think that makes Bayfield County stand out is there's so many really talented artists who have made Bayfield County their home. Uh, what are the galleries up to for the holidays? Well, the galleries are a great place to um, do some holiday shopping and also just to spend time because it's a it's a great place to be. The artists really want to show off their space and their artwork, and so they really dress things up for the holidays and make it a special time to be there and, and to visit and, and do some shopping. If you had to sum up why shopping in Bayfield County is an experience everyone should try, what would you say? This is the perfect place to come and do your holiday shopping because it's just so relaxing and so beautiful. It's a great getaway. It's the opposite of what you think of when you think holiday shopping. It's not hectic at all. It's very relaxing and enjoyable. And I would encourage you to give it a shot. That sounds awesome. Thank you so much, Mary. Absolutely. You know, Ulu Glass has certainly gotten into the holiday spirit. And we're going to talk with Sue Vojak to see what they're up to when we come back. So please stay with us. Looking for cabins to rent on Lake Superior? Siskiwit River Cabins offer clean, charming, year-round, fully furnished, two-bedroom cabins located across from beautiful Corny Beach. The two-bedroom cabins come with a fully equipped kitchen, dining area, a living room with a fireplace and TV, plus free Wi-Fi. There's also a three-bedroom cabin available for rent. If you love to paddle, rent a kayak, or stand up paddle, the Siskiwit River or beautiful Corny Beach are right nearby. The Siskiwit River Cabins are located on the banks of the Siskiwit River next to Siskiwit Bay on Lake Superior. More at SiskiwitRiverCabins.com. That's S-I-S-K-I-W-I-T RiverCabins.com. Or call for reservations, 815-761-2940. Innkeepers Christine Markley and Dennis Clark welcome you to the Artesian House Bed and Breakfast near Bayfield, the gateway to the Apostle Islands National Lakeshore. The B&B offers contemporary, eco-friendly lodging and comfortable furnishings. Its 25-acre wooded setting provides access to many outdoor adventures and is close to a mountain bike trail cluster, Big Top Chautauqua, Bayfield's berry farms and orchards, and woodland walking trails. The Artesian House is Travel Green Wisconsin certified and a TripAdvisory Platinum Green leader. For reservations, you can call 715-779-5992 or email email artesianhouse at gmail.com or check for availabilities online at artesianhouse.com. Welcome back to Bayfield County Wild. Looking for that special Christmas ornament? You might find it in the north woods of Wisconsin at the Ulu Glass Gallery just north of Brule. Run by a family of artists, Jim Vojek blows glass, his wife and our guest, Sue Vojek makes stained glass, and their daughter, Tanya, makes jewelry. Welcome to our show, Sue. Hi, thanks for having me today. Tell us a little bit about Ulu. Well, Ulu is a little town that was originally all of Finnish descent. My grandfather was one that settled there in the early 1900s, and I was born and raised there. My husband was born and raised in Iron River, which is just 10 miles away. The Finnish descent that you talk about, is that where Jim learned about glass blowing? No, actually it isn't. He started practicing glass blowing while he was in college and learned on his own because there was no one around to teach him. So he built his own studio and just started to practice. And that was in the well, late 60s. The studio has a very unique look. I think it's called a Finnish enclave. When was it built? 
Uh, we started designing and building it in 1972. Kind of describe what the building looks like. Well, people come in and say that it looks like a mushroom house, <laughs> but it's actually kind of a culmination of many different designs. Being both artists and studying art history, we kind of took a lot of different ideas and merged them together. Very cool. And everything in the gallery is made by your family members. What kind of things can people find there? Well, we have everything from smaller items like glass jewelry to uh, glass ornaments, goblets, bowls, pendant lamps, pretty much anything you would want that could be made out of glass. I read where one of the reporters who came and did a story about your place, you know, was kind of looking for the mother load of blown glass, and she walked in and she was just overwhelmed with how many things you all had made. That can happen. <laughs> in fact, we um, have on our little display area, or our flyers that we hand out, it says, come and be amazed, and people usually are. I bet, and it's so beautiful <laughs> to look at. It really is. Thank you. So you also have daily glass blowing demonstrations and classes. Tell us about that. Yes, we started those probably 15 years ago, and we have a class offerings for kids and adults. Anyone who wants to try it, you don't have to have any experience. And there is a fee. Uh, it's very minimal for the first class, which is $35, and it lasts about two to three hours. And can you come anytime you want for a class, or, or do you have to commit to several weeks to really learn something? Well, if we have openings, you can just drop in and take a class. But it's best to kind of check out on our website and see what classes you'd like to take and then contact me ahead of time just to be sure you can get in. The glass blowing studio at Ulu Glass is amazing. It's, you know, that's when you walk right in to one of the doors, you can kind of be on this platform overlooking the area where the the big oven is where the they melt the glass and you know they put a rod right in there and then Right. We melt like 50 to 200 pounds of raw material at a time. And it takes three days to get it hot enough to work with. And then we blow glass for probably six to eight weeks once we get started. And you have three different types of furnaces, correct? Well, yes and no. The furnaces for the hot glass is the one that takes the 50 to 200 pounds. And then we have a small furnace where you re reheat the glass. And then we have the layer, which is the chamber that you put the piece in after it's made, and it cools down very slowly. Right. I think when I was reading, they called the place where everything cools down a furnace, but technically I would call that the opposite of a furnace, right? Kind of, yes. <laughs> you're right. <laughs> so I understand you're doing something very special for the holidays. Can you tell us about that? Well, this is about our 30th year that we've had a holiday show, <laughs> and we invite people to come and watch and check out our gallery we usually have homemade cookies, cider, and coffee for everyone, so you can just relax and enjoy the glass blowing or sign up for a class. Give us an idea of what you do during that show. Well, my husband will make things that um, someone will request. He usually has someone help him, either selecting the colors or maybe actually down on the floor helping him create the piece. And he can do something that quickly? Yes, you have to do it quickly in glass because it's not like ceramics where you can work on it, set it aside, and then work on it later. It's, it's an immediate thing. And when is this happening? Well, we're open for this holiday show every day of the week, um, 9 to 5, and on Sundays it's 12 to 5. And that's going on right now? Yes. Through the whole month of December and into yes. January a little and, bit? Yes, and into January, probably the first week or two into January. Well, that's great. What's the best way to get in contact with you if we need more information? Well, you could go to our website, which is uluglassgallery1.com, or you could call us at 715-372-4160. Leave a message because we'll probably be blowing glass. <laughs> and then, of course, if you're looking to get to the Ulu Glass Studio and you're on Highway 2, you look for the Ulu Rock. Yes, and there's literally a giant boulder at the end of the road that you can see from the highway that says Ulu on it. It's painted. I'm wondering who painted the rock. 
You know, that's a secret. It's been there for about 50 <laughs> years, and I happen to know, but I'm not telling. And there's a song that uh, Warren Nelson did about the Rock of Ulu, and it's not a very long song, but... I've heard of it, but I haven't really heard the song. Oh, we'll have to dig out that uh, clip and put that on the show <laughs> notes or something. I've heard about it. <laughs> well, thank you, Sue. It was really nice to have you as a guest today. Well, thank you so much. And Merry, Merry Christmas. And same to you. Of course, there's lots of things happening in Bayfield County this month, and Mary is going to fill us in on that along with what to expect for the new year when we come back, so don't go away. Looking to escape from the city for a week? Come enjoy a relaxing week lakeside at Robinson Lake Resort and Bar. Now under new ownership, the resort has two lakefront cabins with all the amenities you'll need. Located on the Eau Claire Chain of Lakes in Barnes, this southern Bayfield County location is the perfect place to unwind. Find us on Airbnb and Facebook. Catch your breath at the Second Wind Country Inn, located just minutes from the south shore of Lake Superior on the Shawamigan Bay. The inn is just a short drive to catch the ferry to the Apostle Islands. Rustic meets elegant with its up north decor, and rambling acreage makes you feel like you're in the country when you're actually so close to town. The homestead is the newest endeavor at Second Wind with two quiet and cozy suites that were originally owned by the owner's great-grandparents at the turn of the century. The homestead suites are available for a five-night minimum stay. However, there are exceptions when there are last-minute openings. Right now, monthly rates are available from now through May. Call 715-682-1000 to book your stay or visit us at secondwindcountryin.com. Mary and I are back with Bayfield County Wild. This time of year, everyone likes to get festive. What are some of the special things happening up here this month, Mary? As usual, there's lots of fun things going on in Bayfield County, and uh, December is no exception. The first weekend in December kicks off with the Christmas in Cable celebration and that's a really, really fun time down in Cable where all the, all the shops and galleries get in the holiday spirit and have special things going on. And, of course, lots of treats they're serving along with all the special offerings they have going on. I want to say Santa makes an appearance at Christmas in Cable as well. There's also the Holiday Spirit Gallery Tour going on up in Bayfield, and that's a really fun opportunity to um, wander around and visit all the different galleries that have special holiday open houses going on. And then there's all sorts of holiday bazaars going on, especially early on that first week. And when I say bazaar, I mean... You don't mean like, bizarre. There, there actually is one called a holiday bazaar, which is a little on the bizarre side where they do like the funny sweater contest and things like that going on down at the Harbor View oh, event funny. center. Do they sell um, funny sweaters? I don't think they sell them. They just it. model them. I love those but, great, ugly Christmas sweaters. Well, that's the thing. So uh, some of them are um, from the Encore resale shop. And so it's sort of like a little ad campaign for the Encore resale shop while they're, you know, modeling these ugly sweaters. So anyway, that's one of the holiday bazaars that actually is a little bizarre. But the <laughs> other ones are, are more just the crafters and, and artists from the area who get together in locations like the Northern Great Lakes Visitor Center has one going on. Um, there's another one at the Washburn Cultural Center. There's another one up in Bayfield at the the Pavilion. It's it's a really great way to go and do a lot of your Christmas shopping and be in one spot and hit all these different really cool artists. And there's also people that are selling their honey and maple syrup and all sorts of those value-added products, um, local soap makers, all sorts of things you'll find at those places. So between the galleries and then those bazaars, the beginning of the, the month kicks off with a lot of shopping. My Villa which is a wonderful little shop down in the Cable area, has a holiday bash December 5th. And then there's another place down in Cable, the Ideal Market Center, has a, a, its own holiday celebration going on. So two weeks in a row, there's big Christmas celebrations going on in Cable. And then there's some live music, too, at the Dickens Dinner at White Winter Winery. There's Breakfast with Santa at Lakewoods Resort. There's an Iron River holiday gift and craft show, and Santa arrives on the ferry. That's all the week, the next weekend, December 8th. That's a lot going on in the beginning of December. Anything else going on that we should know about? Well, throughout the whole month, um, Rittenhouse Inn has those famous wassail dinner concerts, which are just so cool, where you get to go and enjoy this luxurious multi-course meal while you're being serenaded by a Christmas choir. And uh, it's part acting you know they have little performances kind of going on in between the courses and it's really an, an awesome awesome experience 
And of course, next month is 2019. How are we going to ring in the new year? What's our show about? So in January, of course, we want to talk about uh, ways to get out and exercise to help with those uh, New Year's resolutions. So we're going to talk about fat biking. We certainly do, right? We certainly do. (laughs) We're talking about fat biking, and it's kind of, uh, it's not really that kind of fat, but the tires are fat. If you go fat fat biking, you can get skinny. That's right. (laughs) So Joe Groshek is going to join us and uh, John Murphy, a couple of guys that are expert fat bike riders up here and and take people out on uh, winter adventures, which is really fun. All right. Well, we're going to look forward to that. And if we want more information about Bayfield County, where should we be looking? Sure. Absolutely. You can check the website at TravelBayfieldCounty.com and also the Bayfield County Tourism Facebook page. And to anyone listening, if you like what you've heard, we'd love to have you share, review, and subscribe to Bayfield County Wild. If there's anything you'd like to know about today's episode, we'll have the links and resources available in our show notes. On behalf of Mary and myself, thank you for listening to Bayfield County Wild. Bye-bye.